Hey everyone, uh, I have just walked out of the mountains, which would be obvious if you could see the state of my living room behind me. We have buckets everywhere, there's food, there's sleeping bags, there's mountain gear, it's, it's all happening. Um, we had an awesome, awesome retreat, which I'm going to talk more about in future episodes. But today's episode is all about principle number two for agile organizational transformation, and that is to embrace variation. So last week we talked about this idea of looking outside in from a customer's perspective. Embracing variation is all about how do we build for predictability without having to build for all the little edge cases that are going around. Um, now you'll hear me use phrases like personalization as a myth um, as, as we go through uh, working together and, uh, and, and in some of these episodes. And, and really I wanted to get to the core of it. What does it look like to work with variation? So variation to me looks like that ability both on an individual, a team and an organizational level to really embrace what's coming at us. So on an individual level, and that looks like being able to acknowledge somebody for all that they are, for them to bring them their whole selves to the office, whether that's you, whether it's one of your team members, um, and to bring all of that uniqueness and those brilliant, amazing talents that everybody has that are so much more than what we often see in the office. Um, corporate life has this way of kind of closing in on us um, and sort of funneling us into this idea of what the organization needs or what we think we need. And, and embracing variation on an individual level really looks like embracing all of those unique talents that people bring um, to the office. And to set up systems that enable us to embrace that variation rather than what we have today, which is systems that say, actually, I want to standardize and I want to try and shoehorn everybody into um, one particular way of being, a skill set that I need, a way of working, um, that that's what it looks like on an individual level. And it strikes me that we have this thing that we tell ourselves, even on a really basic level, we tell ourselves that, you know, our brains, own, we only use 10% of our brain, which, by the way, is a total myth. But we've told ourselves these things for so long. How is it surprising that that then manifests as we probably only use about 10% of the capability in our people when we're looking to try and drive a business outcome. We, we, we embody this, this, these thought patterns and we watch them play out in all these different subconscious ways. Uh, so embracing variation on an individual level is a really interesting conversation. And uh, I think, if I haven't talked about it before, but I, I talk about uh, embracing Dan Pink's framework for um, motivation when we're working with individuals and what does it look like to enable autonomy, mastery and purpose for an individual and then allow that to flourish. So once we start to get into this place of actually I can hold that space for that uniqueness in each of my people, um, then our systems necessarily have to change. Equally, whilst we need to embrace on the individual level, we need to embrace on the team level and the organization-wide, organizational level. So once we start putting together groups of people um, trying to deliver outcomes, what does it look like to embrace variation at an organizational level? Well, one of the ways that that manifests is, remember what we talked about last time around embracing a customer in perspective, an outside in perspective, understanding customer demand, like you'll hear me prattle on about that nonstop. What does it look like to embrace variation in terms of what's coming at us from outside the organization and how we align ourselves to that? Well, there's a great TED Talk by Malcolm Gladwell, and I believe it's called Happiness and spaghetti sauce. And in it, what he manages to do, once and for all, from my perspective, is dispel this myth of personalization. So I think, you know, I see organizations a lot of times when we're looking at change programs, when we're looking at redesign, um, when we're looking at just building a new IT system, we end up down this path of going, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? And it's so easy to start designing for all of those edge cases because there's something inside of us that says that if we don't know how to handle everything that's coming at us, then there's a risk. Um, maybe our leaders won't think that we've performed that well. You know, there's, we can't let the ball drop, right? And I've been so guilty of this at many points in my career. Of like, don't drop all the balls. Um, so when we're in these change programs, when we're, when we're looking at redesign, Embracing in variation, if I use that example of understanding the demand that's coming at us from our customers, 
embracing variation looks like a conversation that says, what do we know about what's coming at us? What do we know about what our customers want, what's important to them? And how do we start to bundle that in a way that we can see there's these, these predictable things that customers will constantly ask of us? And this is what Malcolm talks about in his, in his talk. What is the, how do we start to cluster? So rather than serving every single individual on an, on an individual level, what does it look like to cluster those things together so we get these themes? And then if we start to see predictability in those themes, we start to see consistency, then let's build to that. And let's make sure that the system, read the organization that we build, our IT, our processes, the way that our people work, let's make sure that the system that we build, the organization that we build can handle that 80% and just bang it out. Boom, like simple, straightforward. Make that stuff easy. And then if we get something that's not part of that 80% of what customers are asking for regularly, if it's in that 20%, let's grab that and go, hey, how do we solve this? And get a group of people together to solve that problem. But we don't want to build that into our standard operating procedures, our IT and our technology. We don't want to cement that in. What we want to cement in is the stuff that's predictable. That means that we can serve our customers to a predictable level of service regularly for all of the things that they require of us on a regular basis. We've got that stuff nailed. And then what it means is that we have that brain space, we have that capability freed up so that when we get something that's not part of the 80%, we can look at it, we can make an assessment, we can solve it. And we can keep an eye on that to see whether or not it might start to fit into the 80%. That's that start where we start to shift. And we can start to work with that. So a couple of examples for you of how that embracing of vari variation looks on an individual and an organizational level. This will also manifest through the tools that you choose. Uh, so if you want to start going down rabbit holes in terms of visualization of data, take a look at things like control charts where we graph the individual responses. We take an average and then two standard deviations either side of the mean. We have an upper and lower limit. That means that we set up a bracket so that we understand that a large chunk of our data set, statistically it's 99% of our data set, sits within that bracket. And then when we present the data that way, instead of having a moving trend line, a moving average, where we can't see the variability, what happens is we set up the with the visibility of the individual variability and we have the visibility of what's predictable within that bracket. That means that we now have options in terms of how we respond. We can choose to narrow the band. That would make things more predictable. Narrow the band is one form of improvement. And we could choose to try and make the number go up or down, depending on what the measure is. That's another form of improvement. But it just opens that door to additional possibilities around gaining insight, gaining understanding, seeking to understand what's actually going on in our system. So you've got it happening on all sorts of levels, right? You've got it happening on the individual level. Uh, how are we enabling autonomy, mastery, and purpose? What does it look like to align personal purpose with our organization? How do we embrace that variation on an individual level so that people can bring more of their unique talents into the office? And we can get better outcomes because we've got that diversity and that breadth and it's relished within our organization. And then on an organizational level, how do we set up these systems so that we understand what's coming in from our customers, what's predictable? Let's set ourselves up to serve that well, predictably, regularly. And then if we get something that's outside of that, that 20%, we can always pull together a tiger team to fix that but let's not make the mistake of cementing that into our organization. Definitely go and check out the Malcolm Gladwell TED Talk because he talks about this idea of clustering and how to serve people to a high level without having to make, in the example, it's cups of coffee, without having to make a cup of coffee for every single individual person that's perfect. How do we start to understand what's predictable and understand and cluster those things together and then serve at that level so that we can do it well? so that most people can have a great experience. And then for the 20%, we'll work out how to do that. And then in the way that you're presenting data, necessarily if we're trying to change our mindset about the way that we operate, we're gonna to wanna to change the information that we're looking at. 
So start to mash up the ways that you're presenting data in the organization and the way that that looks. And it's not just going to be the average monthly moving trend line anymore. It's going to be these other tools like control charts that start to open up a different dynamic in the way that you view your data. So that's it from me this week. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome week. I'm going to go and pack some stuff up <laughs> and probably spend the rest of the next two days just working out top from bottom. Um, but I hope you have an awesome, awesome week and we will see you again next episode. We're going to go into principle number three, which is all about doing the work and improving the work is the work. So drop me a comment below. Hit me up with an email. I'd love to hear from you. Have an awesome, awesome week. I'll see you again real soon. Thank you.